I'm a big manifestation guy. Love manifesting. Um, you know, I, it's something that's relatively new to me. Like when you officially move from like just regular old prayer to like, actually I'm focusing on a certain target and I'm trying to make it happen. Oh, yeah. And for the longest, for the longest time, I, w I had been doing a series of of doing some Brady Sinellis books um, yeah, yeah. On, on the fiction program, you know, cool stuff like that, you know, like yeah, cool yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. And all of a yeah. sudden, somebody reaches out to me. Yeah. Doesn't doesn't name drop or anything. Just says, hey, would you like to read Alex Kazemi's book? Yeah. I have an advanced copy. I said, yeah, yes. Yeah, send that my way. I, I knew him from the from the Perfume Nationals podcast a, a while ago. Oh, I said, yeah. I, I said, absolutely. Send me a copy. I get my copy. What's on the cover? Freddie Sinellis. Yeah. Oh, there he is. Yeah. From the five to the six, we be in the mix with that rare candy paint job on the whip. I need food for the kids, money for the rent. Fuck a lockdown, baby. I can't do that shit. Now I'll never vote. Cause I'm fucking broke And either way I know the police ain't gonna leave me alone On a plane by the visit Glen Rock Need crypto told me I should bring the Glock with me So I packed up my piece and I'm sliding Cause we might get caught up in a riot Middle finger Trump, middle finger Biden Fuck a left, fuck a right, is you riding? Know oh, you love to see it, dudes rocking Ain't no politics, baby, we just talking From the birds to the bricks, we be in the mix With that rare candy paint job on the whip Who you with? He's a quote my favorite millennial provocateur by yeah. Reddy Sinellis. And it was just weird. It was timing wise. I was just finishing Rules of Attraction. It popped into the in, yeah. into here. It was what I read right after this. Um, it fits very well in there. Um, so before we we talk, before we, we, we really take this in a crazy direction, Alex is oh, ready. Yeah. He's dead. Before yeah, we do that, yeah. let's talk business. Let's talk new millennium boys. You wrote a book a couple years ago, right around the time of, of COVID. Um, yeah not it's nothing like this so no. I'm, I'm curious <laughs> no, dude. i am curious to, as to how like I'm, I'm trying to figure out an author that has two first the, his two books could be any more different like i right like so walk me through walk yeah, me through yeah. both so of these the was, transition it was, yeah it was sort of mm -hmm. a bit of part of my my plan because i knew that i always even though the in the 10-year process of doing new millennium boys um i always knew that i i would write a book about manifestation and magic mm -hmm. because I was studying so much occult occultism and Kabbalah and all of the mystery school systems. And I would see that there's repeating themes and you read all these magical books, all these occult books, and it's all the same thing over and over again, just decorated in more fancy language. So I was like, you know what? I need to reduce this to like simple terms, layman terms to get people Mm -hmm. to understand the bare bones of this stuff so that they can actually change their lives. But I actually had it kind of planned out. Like I wanted, I always believed that new money and boys would come out. So I always thought that, okay, people could go back and learn about pop magic to learn about the discipline and perseverance and visualization and manifestation, all these, these things that contributed to my success. You know, it was just kind of like writing into the future, like hacking the matrix, if that makes sense. It abs absolutely makes sense. And yeah. some new millennium boys. Um, now we're, I'm, I'm, I'm sure we're going to sit on this, but from around the time that the book comes out, so that we'll, we'll just assume that it's, it's either within days or is already out. Um, yeah, yeah, you, yeah. the link will be in the description. You guys can go, can check it out. This book, um, is quite, is, is quite interesting. I like that you have the, uh, the Brady Sinellis blurb on the front because I, I don't think you guys are the same. However, I can see somebody reading it and, yeah interpreting it the same way and also misinterpreting your book oh the yeah same yeah way. oh yeah for right sure. like the nihilist allegations i think i guarantee you you'll get some nihilist allegations yeah from this. he's not he's not a nihilist i mean like I, have you yeah. read the shards i have not i'm going in order right now so I, i'm starting i'm still in the 80s with with brett but i'm 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 going and i'm going I, you're supposed to go in order i heard so i'm going in order you know you know dude i love that like you're just like a, a chill dude who's like discovering brett for the first time because it's such like, yeah. a rite of passage for so many guys and like it, it's it's very honorable like did kelby like read less than zero like very recently right like just for the first he read time. it with me we we both read it for the first time but it's yeah, funny and he because... was already writing before yeah. reading less than zero right yeah yeah and he's also like a character in it let's be real no i'm kidding but yeah <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, yeah no he's he he was yeah and he wrote a book called letting out the devils which is yeah. like I, it would be insane for someone to read that book and be like damn you've never read less than zero and you wrote that book. no but like, that's what i really appreciate and mm -hmm. respect because i think that that's really dope you know to just like tap into a subconsciousness a, a cultural subconsciousness or just like listening mm -hmm. to your own voice and because i think like a big problem in like that indie lit scene is they all 
read each other's work and copy yeah. each other's styles and they're just sort of like all in the room together when like artistry should be about like building an independent singular voice you know mm -hmm. and and right so but like first off i don't even i don't even know that you can be a nihilist in long form writing can you because it's like it's weird it's the, the idea is such a it's such, it takes so much effort and like look you don't nobody made you write a book right nobody said like hey no, I, no, my no. my desk by 6 30 i need i need new millennium boys like no like, well but i had that kind of discipline though like mm -hmm. you have to right. like that's a part of the parapsychology stuff you know what i mean like that mm -hmm. Tony robbins shit like i needed to build the idea of a ceo being within me yeah. because i'm responsible for my own reality i'm responsible for my own su success i think a lot of young authors think oh my publicist is gonna do it for me or mm -hmm. this person's gonna do it for me it's like no like your energy your passion has to be imbued into the into this you can't just be like a snarly hipster and just expect the world to come to you yeah and, and like like i guess that's what that's what i mean it's like if i if i agree to read 300 plus pages of your book there first off even if you are going towards a nihilist thing like we both went on that journey together and yeah. i i i learned characters i learned to be attached to certain people yeah, and yeah. stuff so it's like it's pretty tough like i think journalists can be nihilist i think yeah. tv shows can be nihilist yeah, 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 yeah. I, that because you can you can really like it's just i you know when that was the the critique of brady stanelis and as soon as i finished new millennium boys i'm not gonna spoil the ending of course for anybody but like the <laughs> ending i could see a layman going like oh was that what was that all like was that yeah. like what this yeah. is all about but it's but no it, it's not i mean these are uh, these are bored young men these yeah bored bored young men Privileged. and i and, and <laughs> i i have i have a feeling why you why you chose the time period but i want to know why you chose the time period of 1999 okay so i kind of chose it because of our culture's like y2k obsession it's kind of started mm -hmm. in like the tumblr era 2013 yep. but they're like especially for boys born in the early 90s like there's this like idea that like we missed out on our like real adolescence like in the early 2000s or early uh, late 90s you know what I mean and there's like a lot of romanticizing that era so I kind of wanted to like yeah. explore the masculinity and um the, the sort of bleakness of being a teenager in that time and like the real realities and sort of make a commentary on what it's always like to be a teenage boy you know what i mean and and every generation deal with real themes yeah. that don't ever change but um obviously columbine was a big decision like columbine's influence on the text for sure we're gonna get you right back to the episode but i just wanted to let you guys know of a few other things we offer at rare candy industries we have a sub stack with free and paid subscription options free subscribers get access to all written content that includes bob's red pill that's the best thing going on the internet right now trust me paid subscribers get full access to our premium episode feed and that's just every episode we don't necessarily want to share with the general public if you know what i'm saying again that's rarecandy.substack.com we also have merch that link's a little long for me to say right now but go to the description go to our merch store and find a shirt that's right for you we have rare candy shirts dr bronner soap label shirts rishi mushroom shirts all types of stuff there check it out there's got to be something for you and lastly check us out on social media on instagram we're rare candy pod but on twitter we're at rare candy pod one all right enough of that let's get you back into the episode Yeah. And, and I guess like maybe I completely, I, cause I completely agree. I, I've, I've been noticing cause I'm a little bit older than you. You would have yeah. been what I, I you've been what five during this book, right? Like yeah, when, I'm when born 94. Place. When are you born? I'm 90. So I'm a little bit, a little bit older, okay, but yeah, not, not as old as the characters, <laughs> yeah. not as, not as old as the characters. Yeah, but yeah. like, I, I, I remember everything of that time period though. I experienced it from just a much younger age. And I do notice like people that are like 25 right now, or even younger than that, or like, I think they loved like the, the freedom of that time kind of. The, yeah. They romanticize the, the... it. Right. Like they, they act like this mm. idea, like, Oh, mm -hmm. the idea that I wasn't there. I, they're just so yeah. claustrophobic about the social media feeds and society that they, they, they believe that Y2K represents this like freedom and quiet silence away from like the sensory overload of the world of today. But that world had a lot of sensory overload. As well. <laughs> it sure did. Holy no, it, that was the and and that's why I in my head I thought, especially after listening to, because I I did, actually didn't know that you. Again, we're gonna open up into the, like a much crazier conversation. Uh, but like, I didn't know you were into a lot of the stuff I was into. Besides, yeah, if yeah. I read this book, I thought you were just kind of a shithead millennial like me. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. still that as well. But I yeah. I kind of thought you were you were just more so on on in that angle. But I was kind of 
the reason I it kind of feels like the beginning it is the advent of this era the modern era right now like it is like proto 2023 is the 1999 pre 9-11 yeah you yeah, know there's like yeah. even though because like look 9-11 happened but before that people thought you know this is there's also overblown innocent, too or there's an or yeah. we think that there was an innocence you, you know and people I mean? thought y2k was gonna be a thing not everybody i think that's been overblown too that everybody thought the world was gonna end in y2k yeah, like my parents were like don't that's not real yeah, like yeah, when yeah, i was a kid yeah. but yeah. but there was always this weird like yeah but it, like 2000s a weird ass year like yeah that's good that's weird and everybody seemed like they were trying to empty out all the culture and yeah, kind yeah. of like kind of dumb themselves down almost back to like primitive caveman mode which yeah, led yeah. to some really good stuff um, and also a lot of stuff that maybe in the time was stupid, but like now seems fun because of the freedom aspect of it. Like yeah, uh, yeah. The, the, the free, uh, just people not caring and uh, just ed- edgy behavior. But also like, you know, the, a big part in the book is people kind of like it's the first time you can tell people are having like random video cameras on them. You yeah, know, yeah like, for sure. and, and which like now you know to a to a zoomer it's like you're literally never not being tracked by something yeah like, yeah like, no for like, sure for sure i go to you, bat about that in the book as you've noticed <laughs> uh-huh yeah so 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 it makes sense in that time you know like like people were doing skate videos people were doing dumb like things like the camcorder mm-hmm. reached its way to like younger people it wasn't just like we just had a baby let's get a camcorder let's yeah yeah you know, payday advance for like a camcorder like my parents did like they spent money they didn't have to like film me but then yeah. all of a sudden sony starts creating these smaller things like yeah, yeah the mini dv ones yep. yeah yeah it, right like it, and so then all of a sudden like it's like yeah like you might do something really dumb every kid does something really dumb but like here again i don't want to give away the stuff of your book there could be there could be like there's no way it doesn't wash off your back yeah, you yeah, know yeah, like yeah. the way it, it would have five years before I think you make a really good point. I think movies that probably depict the um, Handycam era is probably American Beauty, The Blair Witch Project, um, things like that. And um, definitely the Handycams are sort of like extensions of how the fact that they're having cameras around them all the time like like Mm -hmm. their own cameras around all them all the time is like making them perform in front of each other more yes and it's like more about blurring the private and the public self and i feel like it was in a way about it's kind of like when she went like you know the pam and tommy sex tape right i feel like that's the reason boy boy do i yeah boy do i too (laughs) um but uh yeah, that was a fun part of research. Um, <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> the, uh, the Pam and Tommy sex tape, I think the reason it was such a scandal obviously was because of them being a high-profile couple and Pammy being a sex icon and stuff like that. But I also think it represented a death of privacy for, Ameri- for Americans and on a global level. like It kind of meant like, okay, if this can happen to them, this can happen to me too at some point in the, ne- yeah. in the near future. So it was sort of like the beginning of cancel culture, public shaming, exposing, um, all of that type of stuff. I mean, Destiny's Child talks about like blasting people on the internet in the song Survivor that came yeah, out in that era, right, you yeah. know? So, so this stuff has been around. We're just seeing it in a hyper real lens. Right. And so, you know, and then you, you have uh, uh, what I, and, and I, again, reading this, I didn't really know anything about you. So th- after kind of, Reading the book, I, I try when I read books, I try not to look up the author when I first That's read them. Sick. And then, yeah, I like and, then a, and then after I because I, I don't like to just come to I like to just go in blind, you know, like I stumbled yeah, yeah. into the movie theater or something, you know, and I, I try to do that. And so, you know, there's, you know, Marilyn Manson plays a big part in this in, the, oh, in this yeah, book, he does. big part. Yeah. He's like this looming character, right? It's almost like you like almost half expect him to like slide through to prom or something like, you know, like you kind of <laughs> you like funny. almost expect like you're almost like, OK, is it like going to is there going to is going to come to a head here? But like there is a character, right? There is a character who is who is completely um who is completely engulfed by like all school shooter music and stuff yeah. like it's just completely engulfed in it and the and, yeah and the aesthetic of it and it's like it was it's funny like i pictured him as mexican in my head because that's how like mexican dudes acted back in the day <laughs> that's just me that was just me like my back i'm from the bay area so i was just yeah, like yeah, yeah. I, I just pictured him as like one of those no, Rob all of them are white boys, unfortunately. they are guys, they are i just i in my head it was like rob trujillo metallica long yeah, yeah, hair no, like, i know i get exactly what you meant yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. No, they're definitely all white that's definitely a thing they are all white in the but it's, it's it's like a very suburban kind of like what's underneath the the filth of you know under the white beautiful voice. veneer of, yeah, of yeah, yeah, suburbia no, exactly. yeah, um but yeah, yeah the the exact um 
Maryland, you know, like the the Marilyn Manson stuff in there. I didn't know you had a had a like you know a relationship with, oh, with yeah, Marilyn yeah, Manson. I That's did. insane. Yeah, I I actually put things that he's said to me in the right. dialogue um, of the book, uh, and um, it was kind of just sort of, like I like to do that, just like immortalize certain people's mm-hmm. energies through through the book that I come across that I came across because like that's what sort of like the process is when you work on a book for ten years, like it's constantly being informed by events, people you meet, things like it's just kind of like this like never ending cycle. But um, yeah, um, it kind of makes me sad that I can't share it with him because you know he's been so canceled and I haven't really spoken to him in a long time. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, definitely. It, Things he's told me about that era, things like that, were were a sense of influence on the text. And um, have you read the ha- Long Hard Road of Hell? His book? No, no, I haven't. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. It's a pretty, it's a pretty uh, iconic touchstone of that era and a rock star at the peak of his fame. It's very interesting. But yeah, yeah, I've come across Mr. Manson, of course, <laughs> through nice. magic. Through ma- through magic, and um. Yeah, and I definitely want to definitely wanna come back to the magic. Um, yeah. The the uh, also another thing you got the whole new age Oprah mom, which is kind of a thing that people don't go back to much as in that era. Like you, everybody goes back to Jackass, Girls Gone Wild, like that. Like oh my god, look how crazy Abercrombie yeah. models, like all yeah, all yeah. that's the you know because people are chasing like the 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 uh, the aesthetic of that again. But like I I I actually like the new age Oprah moms. Yeah um, yeah yeah yeah. Wow, what was your does that did you grow up under I mean I'm I'm trying well, to think No, I remember some. Yeah, I do. I remember some in the neighborhood in the cul-de-sac and mm-hmm. probably like 03 04 memories 02. But yeah, I remember they'd get like their angel cards at Costco and, Yeah. you know, they'd be into these things and they were kind of mystical and and dreamlike and um I actually watched Nano 2 and 0 for the first time when I was writing the book um uh, like in the in the pandemic like just finalizing things. And um, Dylan's mom in that show kind of reminds me of sort of how I was trying to write Brad's mom. But uh, mm. yeah, definitely New Age moms were a thing, everyone. And um, it, it, it was kind of capitalist as amongst it was, as much as it was like a, an attempt to escape the claustrophobia of like American hedonism in a way. Yeah, it gave women fun little projects too, which I I think was like cool. like vision boards. Yeah. yeah, just fun, like fun. Like I, I I think they're very creative people when they're not just like completely zoned out on prescription meds, like looking at <laughs> spreadsheets. Like I think you know, you no, 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 you, no. You're actually very right. You know, and mm-hmm. what's kind of interesting about how the new age stuff at, at, in that era worked is that they kind of existed in the aisles of metaphysical stores, PBS at nine with a weird interviewer. You know what I mean? Like it was mm-hmm. sort of quiet. It, it, it There wasn't this like explore page of law of attraction. The secret hasn't even blown up, but that shit was around. You know what I mean? So it's mm-hmm. like, that shit's been around. So yeah, I, I wanted to sort of paint that Brad's mom is checked out from, from him and the family through the new age stuff. But I was also, I, it's also very California, New Age mom. <laughs> you know, like I think like, that, is. <laughs> that's where the fucking archetype was invented. <laughs> like, like, that's the I, home base. <laughs> I know it well. I know it very well. Like my mom wasn't that. My mom kind of sneered at those type of people. Yeah, um, we all she, I, she never, she never watched Oprah. But it was weird, like how powerful like Oprah was. Because it's funny, like Brad's mom straight up just like will just be like a robot in the book and just be like, well, Oprah said that, you know, yeah, and yeah. Just, like yeah. like decried the m M&M or whatever yeah. like just yeah, yeah, like yeah, oprah yeah, said yeah. that therefore the fuhrer the fuhrer had said has as uh yeah, yeah. the message has rained down from the fuhrer that we cannot support this anymore but it's, it is crazy i was because i was did a uh did something on uh cormac mccarthy a while back and i was okay, looking yeah. like one of the only interviews that he has is like on oprah and it's yeah. like he's like he came out of his little like trapdoor spider tarantula house like to yeah. actually come out to talk to her yeah yeah because that you like you don't turn her down like it doesn't matter like i like what is oprah now i haven't seen oprah in years like what does she even is she even alive like i don't, yeah, I don't yeah, even no, she, she's around i guess she has a a podcast or something like that but I, she's she's a powerful witch if you want to think of that you know what i mean a form of magic and manifestation and and, and things like that but i think um oprah was a way for like a lot of the masses and suburban moms to sort of ingest occult ideas and things from different cultures like Buddhism. Like she was sort of like a 
a vessel mm-hmm. to like like translate or broadcast these ideas to people and i think that that's why she's sort of looming in the background as well because i'm i'm just kind of painting that like mom who's cooking in the kitchen watching oprah like oh, yeah. i'm trying to say like the level of effect of prime time and tv on the zillennial generation at that time period yeah it's exactly that's it that's exactly um how it comes across too and like you know in your it, it, there's just pop culture reference <laughs> upon pop culture reference songs oh, i forgot about songs that i'm embarrassed that i liked songs that i dislike but like maybe even as i got older was like actually that wasn't half bad i just wasn't did old you notice collective by heavy soul uh-huh, no of course. Th- yeah, yeah yeah it was it mm-hmm. no heavy which one is it did I do that right? Do you, I think it was. I think you said heavy it. Yeah, I think it was Collective, collective Soul. Right? Soul. Yeah, Heavy by. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah Collective Soul yeah, is the group. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, yeah, I did. That was, uh, I do, I do remember that. And I was just like, it just, I, because I, I was right around that time was like, now that's what I call music um, would, would come out. I, th- yeah, I think yeah, it was yeah, like yeah. late, late 90s and stuff. And I just remember yeah. having this like, you know, it would be like dumb. You'd have like, you know, uh pod and then like followed by like eagle eye cherry on there which is like funny because like eagle eye cherry's mentioned in there uh in in the in the, in in the a book very what? Emotional it, apex scene. In, a very, <laughs> in a very emotional it's it's funny because like there'll be characters talking about how like fake and gay a lot of the uh it's uh, uh about a lot of the like alternative rock and just nothing mm-hmm. that's like really edgy like they but then like during emotional times these songs are playing <laughs> like oh I do, yeah they're, I do, they're, like, the irony I totally of try that. to paint out like mm-hmm. the hypocrisy and cynicism that they're all trapped in and that like none of it really makes sense like no one in the book really has a sense of identity because they're constantly latching on to different things and i yeah. feel like that's what most teenage boys feel like you know when they're just totally like, especially in that era when you had all the fucking options go to fucking get where your dcs and be a skater and wear porn star shirts or wear a marilyn manson shirt you know what i mean like there was they had so many different identities to choose from in that era absolutely i i i, I think there's something to uh that, like as a teenage boy you kind of know what you don't like before you like something yeah, like, yeah. It's like it's you're constantly just reacting um, which I, th- I don't think that ever left society. In fact, I think that's stronger now. I know so many people, I think either politically or even just they, they, I mean, like cancel culture, I think like the reason people are such proud foot soldier soldiers for like, you know, cancel culture stuff is because it's fun to not like shit. You yeah. Know? It's like, fucking it, weird. I feel like yeah. my book is sort of being canceled in like certain circles I've heard. I don't know much, but I think it's really funny that, people even put any effort into cancel culture like aren't we shouldn't we be in like a post cancel culture at this point like you know like it seems it's, just yeah. like like you're yeah, like they try. smoking rolling they... cigarettes or something i don't know <laughs> yeah you're right yeah like, <laughs> like uh, grapes of wrath smoking cigarettes like yeah just like yeah. these old i i think that uh i think we are moving towards that but there are still like i said there are still people who for one like it's you know it's just like a lot of your characters in the book they're the way that they get the dopamine rush is by pushing the envelope being edgy almost to like a you know not almost oh yeah, yeah 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 yeah, yeah where you're true. just like you know like it's 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 just through and it gets gradually worse and worse and worse yeah, throughout yeah, the book. Yeah, yeah, for but sure, like for sure. but people do that now but in a much more like toned kind of like like an audio compressor that like th- puts a maximum threshold on you that like where you can't go past a certain point but they're just going like I'm mad. I'm mad about this today. Well, I'm mad about this today. I'm mad oh, about this today. I'm mad. Yeah, yeah, no, like, exactly. like, I think, I think that I think because uh, let's be real, like, like these kids are what probably Gen X, right? Maybe well, a little, they're, older. They're, they're millennials. Cause they're, oh, you think they're millennials? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. yeah so they're on the cusp. On the cusp. Very, yeah. Yeah. They're being indoctrinated by Gen X's adulthood. Like Shirley Manson from garbage, you know, at that yeah, time true. would probably be 30, 31. So like, you know, um, or late twenties, don't quote me on that. But you know, Courtney Love was definitely in her thirties. But see, mm-hmm. like a lot of um, the rock stars and celebrities were like our age. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like close to our age at that time. Whereas that's the, this sort of like infantile teen culture of today is was back was was very popular back then. But you know, like I don't even feel like we today have like in a sophisticated adult culture. You know, <laughs> like we don't have any of that. So no, there's no kind of like. 
I know there's, you know, TV, you can put parental controls and stuff. I feel like everybody, adults and kids watch all the same shit now. It's like really weird. Like, like, yeah. you know, like I think kids watch will like, like young people will watch like succession, which they wouldn't like, like a 19 year old kid would not watch succession if it came out in 2000. Like, I don't, yeah. I don't think they would. No. Like, uh, and I say this as somebody who watched it and enjoyed it, but like a 19 year old kid wouldn't, but oh, like now it's so, like, no. like everybody everybody just seems to like kind of watch the same thing. And it's like, we've, you know, I, I've been meaning that you're the perfect person to ask this question. Now I I'm a fan of Terrence McKenna. Uh, okay, and I'm a fan I love of, him, yeah. and I'm a fan of Michael Crichton, the author. <laughs> They're both very different people, but yeah, they both yeah. had in, in the late nineties, they both had a um, kind of a, a long-term view of the internet that they thought, and they were both on polar opposites of what okay, they thought. Okay. Was yeah. Be. Yeah. Terrence McKenna thought that, they'll never censor us again because we don't, there's never going to be a centralized place. He was kind of the libertarian view of the internet, kind of like, Oh, that was the dream of, of the internet. Like the Douglas yeah. Ruskoff dream of the internet was right. exactly what you're saying. Yeah. Just like they'll never, they'll never find a way to do like, we'll, we'll, yeah, always, yeah. Have We're free. we'll always have the truth. Yeah. But Michael Crichton kind of got on his ass or not. It wasn't directly responding. It was just comparing these two. He said, well, I think that it's going to lead to like homogenous thought. I think oh, yeah. once you kind of create this like big area for everyone, naturally they will rank and file. People will rank and file. Now there are factions that go against each other, but it still kind of is all in the weird algorithmic like binary thing. Oh yeah, like, no, no, for, yeah. for mm -hmm. sure, for sure. And I, I think, think he was that, right. I think he was yeah. right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, for sure. Because people, the internet is just your subconscious mind throwing up. It's all your trauma. It's 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 a it's an externalization. Yeah. And and of your all your automat automatic reactions. So there's a lot of mentally unwell and sick people in the world. So if they don't clean up their inner and do their inner work, you know the way the kind of culture that they're going to create is a sick and traumatized culture. You know, with the way that they use the internet, this is why things like cancel culture exist and and other and other stuff like that. But when it comes to like homogenous thought and monetized thinking, I totally think that comes from exactly what you're saying, like these digital ecosystems that are just everyone is occupying where you're constantly being indoctrinated into the same thoughts. There's no, there's no freedom of mind. No one, no one's fucking red pilled. They're all liars. I that's, and that's what I'm saying. And like this, I guess this is a, I definitely want to pop up to, to your book here and there, but I, I want to talk about that. that you, you were in a, I've listened to you on tinfoil hat, like a lot of these old interviews and stuff oh, yes, like Sam, yes, Sam yes, Tripoli. Yes. And there was a really yeah. fun, like I, they call it a debate, but you guys were just, you know, riffing back and yeah, forth. Yeah, it, was, yeah. it was, it was good. It was good. And I, I'm forgetting the guy's name, but he was like a really nice, like Christian Greek Orthodox guy. And um, that you were, that you were Isaac, going against. Isaac, Isaac. Yeah. Yeah, 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 watcher. Cool. yeah. Yeah. He's yes. sick. Yeah. Yeah. He, he was good and but i but I, I i understood what you were saying in a sense that like okay like we have a lot of demonic imagery now right like yeah. doja cat i just saw doja cat put out a video that like yeah she that's was very just, low like, vibrational man i've i've checked like the energy like of it and like uh -huh. i don't know i i have yeah i'm thinking about that song a lot but yeah <laughs> right like and I, I i i don't know for me on the nose demonic injury or injury <laughs> imagery has never been the uh has never really like I, I've always thought that that was just kind of like a, Hey, look at me kind of thing. Yeah, like yeah, I want to, cause especially now you can dominate the discourse by like just putting on like Satan horns because so like stupid. somebody yeah. will have to support you because they know the other side is like evil and Christian. So like they're, they don't even really like you, but they know that like, their that enemy hates you. Where is this happening? Oh yeah. It's a big That's thing. So anytime weird. little Nas X, anytime that happens, I, oh, weird. otherwise I'll never hear the song. Cause if it makes its way to me, I know somebody's arguing about it. That's so, that, like, that artists that's the, could provoke like that still. Oh yeah. And it, it just seems that way. Now there's a lot of people who go, no, 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 this is just evil. This is what they're yeah. doing is just evil. And I'm like, no, I, I think the whole concept of the evil thing is you with 12 hours of screen time looking at that all day. Yeah, that's, and reacting that, that's to it. Oh, yeah, that's totally evil. That's and the I evil think, part because it tells you your whole life is that. Like you you have given your whole entire life to reacting to things on a fucking small ass little screen. Yeah, because you're sublimating yourself. You're you're like the people have to just understand the internet is the astral plane. You know what I mean? Like this is just an astral it's just immaterial. It's just astral. It's, 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 a uh, it's a, it's, a, it's, we're projecting something we're projecting something from our consciousness. We're remote viewing, you know, um, exactly what you and I are doing right now is like out of body, you know, like this is crazy. This yeah. is crazy that we're doing that. I mean, like, yeah, it's just yeah. it, like, I do this all the time, but it's crazy. Like, it, it's <laughs> never not, it's never not shocking, but I think like what 
um, people don't have is like a balance because they, I think maybe because they recognize a desire for the spiritual or immaterial. So they end up like worshiping their screens mm -hmm. and they like end up like making Twitter into their God or, you know, it's really fucking scary. Like the feedback loops, like authors get into on Twitter, like when they talk to themselves, like I wrote 15 pages last night and like, all oh, this is like, bro, like, 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 you know, that, that, that's like psychotic, like, like being in like a dialogue with yourself like that. But I think like, um, yeah, it, it, it's really, I don't, I think we could go to like a less screen time, touch the grass society. People don't want to do that. No, no, they not at all. They want to be strung out on this stuff. They want the comfort of, I need my group chat to be going a hundred times per hour so that I can feel alive and not have to deal with my mortality, existentialism, all the things that happen when I turn it all off. Yeah, that's a good point. I think, I think it is, it is like a, you're right. It's like an astral plane, like almost a pause button kind of yeah. like a pause button on life, which is crazy because like the things you say could actually affect the material world, like your own. Like if I go on and say, Oh yeah. Yeah. Like, if I, like I mean, social media magic. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. If yeah. I, if I tweet a few lines from new millennium boys, some select lines, I mean, there's a, I mean, I, there might not affect me, but I could, somebody could go, Hey, where's that guy work? Boom. Send it to his job. You know, like it's weird. Yeah. It is really weird. We are one foot in and one foot out oh, like, yeah, uh, like yeah, in the, yeah. in the material and the, and the spiritual world right now. But I also think there's something to this where like, you know, so many people love to reject spiritual woo woo nonsense yeah, yeah, and stuff yeah. as a part of a, a growth. Cause they're like, Oh, I'm, I'm a traditional religion. We we've, I'm a materialist, I knew, yeah, I'm a materialist yeah, or yeah. even just religious, like I'm yeah, religious. Yeah. So therefore, None of that stuff's for me. But my, my thing is like this, like, okay, first off, very successful and famous people love this shit. And, and the reason you can say that is because all tech innovation is just, re is just basically selling gu like whatever, whoever you think gave you your gifts, either psychic ability, um, you know, mm -hmm. magic, anything like that. They're just, it's like the guy who discovered water could be bottled and selling it. Oh, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like I was just seeing the other day, Pink Floyd song. This guy recreated a Pink Floyd song out of brainwaves or something like that over at like Harvard or Smithsonian or something like that out of brainwaves and stuff. And it's like, yeah, dude, like we used to power like Egyptian fucking weapons with yeah, our minds yeah. back. Then, yeah, dude. Yeah. Like, like, yeah. like this, this shit is like basically they they did that Men in Black like fucking red light to society yeah, 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 yeah. and then you know, yeah. we heard something. Yeah. Like, no, yeah, no, no, no. We're no, just, no, we're, yeah. we're just completely, we've been, we've bought the internet. We've bought cyberspace, mm -hmm. at the peak and the apex of like what we can do. So oh, therefore, yeah. I mean, we were indoctrinated into social media addiction. We were groomed into it, you know, as a culture, like they, 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 I mean, I don't know. Sometimes I have theories that it is like alien technology and like, it's from like, yeah, place for things, that. like, or like, you know yeah. what I mean? Or like that, uh, you know, the, those type of things. But, um, I, I definitely think that it was like a gradual process. You know, they groomed us with like, oh, like get on Instagram. You can see your friends in chronological order and all this type mm -hmm. of stuff. And then slowly and surely no more chronological order, no more being able to brand yourself. Now you yeah. are constantly having to be pressured to give meta money to advertise yourself, to get views or ads. It was, it was always like a plan, you know what I mean? And it's, it's unfolded is exactly how they wanted to. And it's never not shocking that people still continue to use it but because society has made us feel like we can't survive without it and um that is the whole game and manipulation of the corporations do you feel like the time because i mean you, you know new millennium boys kind of takes place right at the beginning of that i didn't know it ever really gets to this was, point, yeah. but, it, but, it, but yeah. it really is like right then and there do you yeah. feel is it just kind of us being a little too uh narcissist as a generation like where we think every year is like a really important year and every you know but if, yeah. even when we zoom out if we hit the magnifying minus glass like a yeah, few yeah. times do you think that like this time period is actually going to be special like 100 to 150 years from now i like, think so I, because I think so it was too. the mm -hmm. last time pop culture existed and it was also um the last it, it, it was the last time that you know boomers were able to control millennials in such a um a pop brainwash fashion you know like you like okay turn on mtv watch trl i'm gonna sell you this 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 and this and this and you're all in one arena you're all watching one thing at 7 p.m all glued to your screens now it's more like i could be listening to rare candy at 5 p.m you know what i mean like there's so many different 
points of media yeah. to put into like your daily schedule, you know? So I think that there's a lot to be studied about adolescent culture in that era and how it was sort of like the last kind of, I mean, I guess when we were, I mean, you were a teenager. When did you graduate? Oh, six. Oh, eight. Oh, eight. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I was in grade eight in 2008. So like, um, we were kind of a part of like bro culture and things like that in 08, mm -hmm. 07, 06 kind of mirrored 1999. It was just so much more accelerated, so mm -hmm. much more intense. Um, but yeah, no, definitely. I do think fashion, music, art from that era is historically relevant for sure. Yeah. And I almost, I almost think it's like BCAD kind of shit, dude. Like to be oh, honest, no, I like, believe I, you. I, yeah. like, yeah, like, yeah, I think like, sure. I, and I think even this, that the, the 25 year span, let's say roughly 25 to get us up to here now, yeah, like yeah. roughly 25 years, which feels crazy that that's 25 yeah. years ago, yeah. but nonetheless, if roughly that time period, like that's going to be like a weird enlightenment era period. Like, like when you talk about like stuff from way back in the day, like just kind of like, this is kind of like, you, like you think about when like materialism like became a thing in like what 19th century or something like when well, yeah, yeah, I know what you mean, like, like, like i think i think yeah. i think it's i don't know i will never say good or bad i i kind of lean bad to be honest like what yeah, we're yeah. doing right now but but i i think like 200 years from now unless they completely rewrite history which could happen and yeah. does happen yeah for the most part if you look back on it, you'd be like well so that's when it all changed and i just yeah. i just wonder i just wonder yeah, yeah no we're for just, sure like, i think i think like we can see like politically like in 2016 you know when the social justice warrior outrage started to happen and the culture started to manufacture the cultural war with like milo and you mm -hmm. know outrage and did you see that blue-haired feminist censor that guy you know like they, yeah. they were just grooming us to be outraged and to hijack our emotions and feelings all the time with with the cultural war the culture war sometimes i don't even know if the culture war exists i think it is a byproduct of maybe an ideology to just get to people to continue to be at war with each other. Like I there's don't There's an really... opt-in. There's an opt-in clause for sure. Like you yeah, have to opt-in opt in a little clause. bit. Yeah. 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 I think I think it's happening. I think it's happening. It's not nothing. I do think the the everyday let me put my boots on and go fight type thing, that is absolutely opt-in. You do not have to do that. There's yeah. certain things where I'll be I'll see something on the internet and I'll be like, all of a sudden, like a month later, I'll see it kind of pop out in the real yeah. life. And I'm like, no, oh, no. Like, and it does feel like a demon, like escaped, like a, like a port, like you're like in your dreams or something like, uh, like, or, or some weird thing happening in your dreams that like you see in real life. And you're like, that wasn't supposed to be in the material world. Like this thing that I'm, that I'm seeing, like that definitely does happen, but you're right. Like for the most part, it's like, no, for the most part, you guys are justifying an online addiction by getting this mad. Right. Oh yeah, 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 no, for sure. And I yeah. think like I think like there's also theories about like Moloch and Minotaurs and like energies um that I'll I'll, I'll send it to you after the pod, but like this idea that like <laughs> yeah. um parasites get hosted on the internet and like the dig digital entities and that they um sort of deceive us into into thinking that we're making time move faster, like when you're on like a porn spiral and it feels like time is moving so fast you know what i mean like mm -hmm. that like those type of things and also same with the internet like you could be on your screen and it will feel like okay at 1 p.m i started and then it'll be 6 p.m and it feel like no time passed like people think that's from an entity that is hosted on the internet there's something there because i've had those days man like i've had my days where like i'm just like not doing shit for like five hours but it felt like an hour yeah, yeah. And, and I'm tired. I'm like, why am I tired? Yeah, because like, it's like, like, yeah. life force. Yeah, yeah. It's a yeah. vampire. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. It's crazy. Um, so let, let's talk about you a little bit. Like you, you um you were on you, you brought up Milo. You went on Milo's podcast when you were 19, Milo Yiannopoulos, 2016, yeah, yeah. the height of another yeah. kind of pivotal year, like yeah. a real pivotal year. Yeah. So, but were you into like magic and stuff then? And then like, well, your, I don't know. Like... I think when I was 20, yeah, I was 22, but yeah, okay. 22. 20, I, I, yeah, I don't know why I thought 19. Shit. It's the same shit. Yeah. But um, mm -hmm. I was definitely a, um, very like angry and disenfranchised and like mm -hmm. upset at the world and culture at the time as most 22 year olds are. So I, I wasn't into like black magic or anything, but I was, I started practicing magic when I was 21, but definitely, um, going on milo i guess i aligned myself more with a darker energy because kind of chaotic things started to like 
happen in the material world after I did that. So I feel like maybe the vibration he was yeah. either vibrating at that time or the people who were into him were like very lower tier negative levels of the vibration scale. So, um, but yeah, no, I, what I did was served a purpose. I was sort of like, I feel like I kind of like predicted what the dirt bag left and like reds here and all that type of stuff was going to become by going on there. Like I was like sort of, cause all those people didn't really exist yet in the mm -hmm. public sphere, but I think like I was sort of onto something. I, it was just a bit too early. Interesting. So then, I mean, you know, you, you, so now walk me up to when you first write you, when you write your first book, right? Magic, oh, magic. with a K, right? Like, yeah. like, 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 like what, walk me up, like what, what happens between that time? Cause I mean, I have my journey, which is not nearly as, as crazy as yours, but like, let's, let's put it this way. If I Google image search you, there's pictures with fucking Taylor Swift and stuff. Like when, <laughs> yeah, how is, do we get, how do we get there? Magic, I, magic, I'll say man. it right now. I'll say it right now. I have a very conspiratorial audience that's listening to this right now. And but that might work against you. I gotta get you, Sean Stone on this podcast. Hey man, oh that's Oliver Stone's son, right? Yeah, he would fucking absolutely. Love you. Oh, I, I, it's not. I the, it's not the first it. time. It's not the first time somebody has said he needs to come on here. And okay, I think, good. Uh, okay, yeah, we're he needs to. Yeah. So yeah, exactly. But but what I'm saying is, our minds is very conspiratorial, and it might work against you a little bit in one way. So I want to I want to get this out of the way before people okay, think okay, we're yeah. insane. Yeah. Um, all right, uh, you're a guy who practices magic yeah right you've had a pretty crazy rise to yeah. to to where you are to the yeah. point where you have madonna pumping your your first yeah book. you don't get that you, without doing magic right like, but, but what i'm that. what somebody might say like this dude's summoning fucking demons he's hanging out with marilyn manson he's doing oh, all this yeah. stuff like that did you act did you like did you do some dark shit no no i didn't do some dark um i didn't do some dark shit i feel like maybe there were earlier rituals with that involved Manson and certain people that maybe were a bit gray, but um, they mm. they definitely were the root source though to my rise, and it's kind of making me analyze it right now. But um, <laughs> it was all consensual, and and it was um, it but it was um, yeah, it was it was magic. Let's just say that. But um, dude, yeah, of course. I mean, magic is is a. I mean, why am I the only you know? like coming on the scene with all these blurbs and Madonna co-signs and stuff. That's all a byproduct of very deep Kabbalah work and, and studying occultism. And it's not new. A lot of very successful people, like I talk about in pop magic, like the mm -hmm. fucking millionaire in the suit in wall street that you see down the street is probably fucking doing magic, you know? Oh, I completely agree. And I, and my thing is, is like, if you want to write that off as like, elite evil like bullshit i'm like hey that's that's your idea of it but like they're gonna keep rocking so you might as well you might as well like that shit is what you make it you know what i mean like for oh me, yeah like, no no I, for sure i manifest all the time like i i do like some some guided meditations really like oh, deep yeah, yeah. like deep guided meditations we've had guys from the monroe institute on this show just to really oh, like yeah. just to really get us like in that mindset and i'm typically a very negative i eat myself from within i'm very much that guy when i don't when i'm not well, what's um, your sign yeah what do you think my sign is i just want I to thought know you're i was a fire like, sign no okay. what is, is is libra fire sign no no you're libra okay, okay. uh yeah because i i was like when people i don't know you're i don't know anything about sign. astrology sign. okay cool uh, interesting so k2 is I'm crossing your sun interesting okay, okay. Uh, anyways <laughs> anyways so so, so 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 that so I guess what I mean is like, you know, there's people that, that are scared of like that, like dark art stuff. And, but like, look, like Kabbalah is a lot of my favorite people. Like, like I, I'm a huge David Bowie fan. I love David Bowie. Yeah, Station, station to Station, station, to, station, to, station yeah, yeah, is a Kabbalah song, there. man. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's So what is the science behind that? Like, I mean, or, you know, like the state, cause I don't understand what he's saying as far as like in the, I just know it's a Kabbalah okay, song. Okay. So like, first off, um, your first question was kind of asking about what what was the moment like I decided to write pop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, so, yeah true, and then we'll get to around. and we'll get to station to station in one second. Um, mm -hmm. Was because I was manifesting material and external things, and my soul was not being satiated. Like there was, I was, I felt godless. Like I was without God. I was, I uh. was, I was worshiping the self and the ego, and I was deceived through practicing this magic because as I got things, I thought I was getting more powerful. And as I got bigger, I thought I was getting more bigger and all these things. And that is completely 
wrong and, and, and deceptive. So when you hit that point, they say in Kabbalah that like, a point on the heart is is born and you, you crave something more. And because I was already practicing magic, I was already sort of knew that Kabbalah was very advanced and, you know, like Crowley and like deeper hardcore shit that I didn't know if I could even comprehend. Like even when I would hear these terms that I'm so comfortable with now in books, they would just shut me down. You know how that works, like intuitively, mm -hmm. like at your, mm -hmm. at your soul level where you're at. And then I really craved Kabbalah and I started practicing it. And I learned about all these things and I learned about like the tree of life, which he talks about in um, station to station, Malhut to get there. Malhut is this plane, the lowest dimension, the, the lower earthly plane. And Keter is like the highest plane, right? So we are constantly choosing between, am I going to choose the tree of knowledge, which is instant gratification, gluttony, envy, all of the, the negative uprooted traits of the ego, or am I going to choose the tree of life, which is mean means I'm going to restrict my nature and I'm going to be an alchemist and I'm going to, and I'm going to change that. I'm going to change. And that's how you get the stuff. So through Kabbalah, what we, what we receive is directly portionate to the spiritual work that we're doing on ourselves. I so see. the more you clear out and crush these darker, they call them klipa, klipa spell, the shells. When you crush the klipa, then you release, release and relieve the light okay yeah i'm sorry I, okay so so i mean is there i mean it's similar to like a law of attraction kind of thing you get oh, it which no, you for sure love it like yeah. like law yeah. of, all of new age stuff and occultism is rooted in the cabal even things in the bible all of the religions all the spiritual systems are all trying to say the same thing and spirituality when you're practicing a more higher level is really not about getting things it's about how can i share how can I give? And so a lot of people are like, oh, you know, why is Alex Kazemi everywhere with this book right now? The Money Boys are so much promotion. It's because I want the opportunity to affect someone's soul. If then why am I creating art or why am I doing magic? You know, like if, if, if it's all just mm -hmm. going to be for me in the end, there has to be joy that I create in others. Like when you do this podcast, you have to, you should be putting out the intention. Okay. What am I, how am I going to bring joy to my listeners? How am I going to channel? Yeah. What am I going to leave behind for them that is going to create a uh, um, light for them? You know, we're trying to like birth more and more light. I think that's, I think that's beautifully said. I, I, it's, it's every, you're right. It's everywhere too. It's like, people could say, well, I'm this religion. It's like, well, the station to station. I mean, you never stay in one world in any religion, no, right? No, like no. you never do. You got it. And you always have choice. I mean, I think almost every religion has free, w free will. I'm not in the And I would imagine oh, yeah. like, like the only people that aren't into free will are like just hardcore materialists. Right. I mean, for the, like, for the most part, I would, I would think, but like, for like, for me, for someone to just completely reject that, it's like, why are you closing yourself off to something that has been proven in every religion you know what i mean and and like i'm sorry these mega stars like it's not a coincidence it's that not, a lot of these mega the, stars I mean, don't you know about like the episode of uh the kardashians apparent where like uh high conspiracy theorists where like kim is having like a nervous breakdown that's a really early episodes they're like not as big yet not as rich yet but they're pretty rich that she's having like a nervous breakdown that like someone was touching her manifestation candles you know what i mean mm. and like and then and like and she was so look none of this stuff is even really secret or occult anymore i think people are doing themselves a disservice to have that level of cynicism towards our birthright to access spirituality and to connect to the upper worlds like i find for me any time that any pursuit or desire whether it's through validation sex drugs rock and roll whatever it's i'm just trying to manufacture a godlike experience and if i just yeah. do kundalini yoga or do tm or do something that gives me that direct why am i putting myself through that in the material world to, to, to because i i'm at i'm 29 now so i'm like it, the cycles just seem exhausting you know like the like the of of, of, it, of i'm not i mean like I don't really believe in like identifying with addiction and all of that, but you know, like compulsivity or being in like feedback sure. loops of yourself, like that's really tiring as you get older. Yeah. And you've talked about addiction. I've heard you say it where it was essentially like what, what you would kind of what you had just alluded to. I, th I thought you had said something that was uh, maybe it was on another show or, or something where it was just like trying to like 
trying to just constantly get out of the material world is like what a lot of addiction is like with yeah, drugs yeah, or something. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, like I thought I've never really heard it put that way, but like, I'm not a, um, I don't have a, as far as like drugs or alcohol, I don't have like a, like a, an issue with that. I definitely want to be out of the material world sometimes. Like I yeah. love a lot of that stuff, but I, I don't chase it or, and it's, I don't have a desperate need to leave it. And luckily I've found other ways to do it, but I, I completely understand it. Like if your life sucks, man, you are looking to completely escape. Right. And I think in new millennium boys, the, they're trying to escape too. They're just doing it within like just being edgy and like destructive and, and um, yeah, and torturing and, people and, all the time and torturing animals and yeah, all types well, of stuff. Well, did you, you like, pick up on the fact that they're like that they're all rich kids? You know what I mean? Like, I think a lot of people are missing the fact that like a part of their identity loss and all of these issues and, and all these things is because they're not working at the mall i mean lucif chooses to to sort you know we all know that one rich kid who like wants to blend in you know what i mean mm -hmm. it won't, like and it, it will hide their money but like i was trying to sort of paint that upper class sort of um malaise and boredom yeah well and it's like you know they clearly have idle minds right like yeah, i yeah. think i like it's it's the devil's playground that's what's one of the oldest uh yeah, tricks in the book. Yeah. yeah yeah it's just exactly exactly and you have these like they're they're not exerting themselves in any way other than like when the camera's on or when the when the um yeah. you know when the when the spotlight's on or something yeah, like that yeah, which yeah. is yeah, again sure. we we didn't we didn't lose that as a culture like yeah, sure. um we didn't lose that as a culture in fact i think it's even worse oh, because yeah. the spotlight is always on but again we are in like you said earlier we we're in this like immaterial world of the internet at the same time the spotlight's on it's very strange um I, yeah, yeah. I i don't think people understand how new all this stuff is like in a grant in the grand oh yeah yeah no things. no for sure right like, yeah yeah, yeah. Sure. this, this like way of living cameras showing up in that era the birth of surveillance and just like all of, all of the, the the loss of privacy the death of privacy and yeah it's it's pretty insane to think of sort of like the way that i sort of explored magic in the book and how lucif deals with magic and 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 does black magic and things like that um i've seen like real people in my life like go down really dark paths because of the satanic bible and entities in there and evoking them and things like that and it's not a fucking joke to fuck around with that shit you know and i think that a lot of people who align with themselves with that want to live a level of gluttony and excess and self-worship but there is such destructive consequences if you fuck with that shit i mean you talk about that with marilyn manson i mean it's yeah. like you talk about that in a sense like you know you, i won't put words in your mouth but you do i remember hearing you say like okay when you summon you know or when you deal with like dark entities and stuff like that the satisfaction happens a lot faster, right? Like yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah, the reward sure. is like a Insta lot Gratis faster. And his life was about instant gratification. It is also, we have to remember, what about the karmic retributions of all of the dark energy that he brewed up on TV and, you know, like uh, people, concerts, rituals, you know, like that stuff is real. You know what I mean? It's And, and I'm not saying that that doesn't serve an aesthetic purpose, but Right. Art is powerful vibrationally, you know, and if you're charging that, but also I would hope what we could learn from the Marilyn Manson era and just his work in general is, is that the shadow has to be exposed. Darkness has to be exposed. We shouldn't be afraid of our dark right. feelings and emotions. We have to manage them and deal with them. He never took it to that the the next level of maybe cabal. It would have had been very interesting if he had alchemized. Can you imagine like an alchemized Marilyn Manson it would have been fascinating oh and I think a lot of people who have these weird perversions or anything that's there yeah. like we, we need to like as a society grow up and start like I, there's people that are just naturally weird by by birth that have like these yeah, weird yeah. perversions like and some things can be fetishes. groomed and, and yeah, 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 yeah. yeah fetishes and stuff like that but like I think right now people just don't have like huge outlets for them right now and, or like uh because you feel a lot of Buddhists or even like Taoist stuff they they understand that sexual desire and all these things are are gonna be there but there are ways to take that desire oh it's very powerful have you done nofap yes absolutely i mean yeah it's... yeah i talk about nofap your damn pop magic's gonna be your fucking i know I, I'm, I'm definitely gonna read it i <laughs> yeah I, i'm gonna I'm send a... you a copy immediately dude it's all right man you. i will read i will absolutely read you've it you've already thought about 
just mirrored back to you. It's fucked. But yeah, yeah no fap. Um, I think what's important for young men and any man to try no fap is like to understand that your sexual energy is like a crystallized force that can be transmuted and directed and like a uh, like subdued like that like there's power in that and like there's something extremely powerful when you're in like a horny animalistic state where you feel so out of control and you don't give into it you let yeah. it pass that bleeds into so much discomfort in the gym when you do legs other things you know what i mean like it it helps so much mm -hmm. in all different ways when you just practice viewing feelings and emotions as like sensations passing through the body that's all it is just sensations rejection sensation passing by it doesn't mean anything it's yeah and also thing. like like you'll hear like a celebrity who like slips up and has like a weird like oh it's exposed that this guy has like this weird fetish and everybody like piles on him and it's like well first off all their great art comes from that fetish probably that's probably yeah. what they do that's probably their way of channeling is yeah, like okay yeah, yeah. like even if it's like you know kind of banal and they don't act on it but it's just exposed like through a text message oh yeah like, like hey. camille Polly is really into that like the mm -hmm. idea of like the obsessive um artists and that our obsessions inform our reality and what we create and things like that i mean that's like what's a like a bit kind of like disappointing about that whole kind of like poly obsessed kind of like dirtbag left scene to me is is that like they're they don't understand that her work is about like creating change and art and things like that you know and like po positivity it's not uh -huh. about like intellectual masturbation you know it's like actually and i just I yeah don't see much I, I see what you mean from those people i see what you mean yeah people will love to be like well okay i i read polya and th therefore i have a complex take on x situation and it's like yeah, no, yeah. Like, they, it makes them feel the, like they've jumped yeah. to a conclusion that makes them feel smart and i'm like mm, next you know no like, yeah and, and it's like, like that's at the end of the day yeah, yeah. it's like you it kind of is masturbating at that point yeah, what you're yeah. doing like yeah, you're yeah. kind of basically yeah. just like like just just self-flagellated like it's it's all you have to like it all comes from weird people i'm weird I, I, yeah, in yeah. a much different way. Any, I, I think everybody I know that's like truly creative. Now you, uh, you have, you definitely have some, you know, different beliefs and and uh, than mm -hmm. than the, the average person. And you, all, but like a lot of people I meet that do like really hardcore spiritual stuff, they kind of like have like a weird like almost mormon vibe to them, like pure mormon vibe. You know what I'm talking about? Like when you talk about yeah, some like spiritual yeah, spirit, yeah, like yeah. kind of just like. Oh, thank you thank you for asking me for that question thank you yeah. like you know just kind of like those type of people no disrespect to them whatsoever but like then you you know you pick up something like new millennium boys like that edgelord factor is still in there how do you balance between the two yeah i think like it's kind of interesting i feel like like with alex kazemi i've always thought of like him as sort of like because i always felt like as soon as you become like a like like the definition of like selling your soul is like literally giving yourself away to like a character or an image or an idea you know what i mean and i feel like for my career as a performance artist as a novelist like that sort of was a part of the deal and the pact so alex because i mean like the novelist at, who has to kind of like portray ideas and all this type of stuff i'm sort of like in control of him as like an avatar whereas like my real self or my authentic self that I sort of like protect from people and stuff. Like, I feel like that is my private spiritual self that is, you know, on Saturday doing like 10, like five hours of Kabbalah prayers, you know what I mean? And just like thing, like just deep senses of focus and things like that. So I manage manage the two, but also I think if anyone has big dreams or anything like that, you should have a level of spirituality to keep you understanding that it is an illusion and that you can't be deceived by, the, the ego and things like that yeah i and like it's weird i i think um i had an ego death experience um uh kind of kind of like a new millennium boys type ego death experience <laughs> oh uh, my God. um this was when i was a little a little bit older i think early 20s um i've talked about it on here before but i'll, I'll just briefly relay it i took some mushrooms i took a half eighth of like gold caps and i didn't feel anything for like a half hour as like an idiot i ate the whole eighth is this I, like blue mountain state era probably tw probably 2012 yeah there 20, you go. 2012 ish yeah. yeah and i and i ate it up and like i was just like completely i was gone i was just completely gone i different reality yeah, different, just like time had. time didn't <laughs> exist like just yeah, completely yeah. gone but yeah. then also i took off all my fucking clothes like outdoors 
You know what I mean? Like because you're probably trying to like shed shedding. Exactly. Exactly. So at the time, my 22 year old brain, I was just embarrassed to death. I I couldn't live it down. I didn't want to go to that friend's house anymore or anything. Clicked with me like two years ago that I was like, no, I needed that. So like sometimes your ego will die, but you don't actually know you 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 mourn it. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. No. But oh, for sure. But when I when I realized (laughs) that chasing power and success and all these things couldn't ever see sheet me in the like like the the nullification of the self i like the, i was such in a survivalist state in my early days of magic like i had like my my ego and myself was like my everything you know like it was like keeping me together but like as soon as i had to kill it like sort of work on killing it off every day it was a huge battle mm-hmm yeah, yeah, it's 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 tough. It's it's tough. And um I guess the last thing I wanted to talk to you about was 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 time. You know what I mean? Like yeah. the concept of 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 time. I'm I'm obsessed with it. I, I'm obsessed with other people's definition of time, like how they view time. Right now you're in a crunch, right? You're on a crunch, you have a book um that's that's coming out, you're doing all, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um and, and all and all these things. So I, I would imagine that time is at a premium and 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 things you know uh things like that but like do you ever do you ever feel like you can manipulate time i feel like i've i feel like i can i think i think so i think like when i walk really slow down the street it feels like i'm in a different reality like if i just allow myself to slow down i feel like time does yes feel slower when i when i act that and then i feel like when i'm moving super fast time moves super fast but also like i don't know if i really like believe in time like i think it's like a construct of our brains and mind and i think that it's probably just like one sort of consciousness you know what i mean if we never saw a calendar and we just saw day and night like i think i don't know i mean obviously we need time to bring order out of chaos and schedules and things like that but so like manson used to talk about it in interviews and we used to talk about it together but he kind of said like if you point out like the difference between when i was like 17 and like 30 i I, I can't feel that, that the time in between, like, it's not like being stuck there, but it's like, it's almost like you're creating the past right now. You know what I mean? As a memory, like, we don't, I don't really know if it even happened. What if the images I'm even yeah. seeing are I'm creating right now? You know, I mean, because Kabbalah tells mm-hmm. us we literally create everything in the world and that it's for us. So, and that's a not kind of a Gnostic principle. Well, it's no. totally Gnostic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's, I, Gnostic. I, I don't know if I'm fully there on on Gnostic stuff because I do think that I, I'm more of traditional, like um, I won't say traditional, but like well, in in terms of manifestation, I just feel like I've unlocked part of what what god gave me i i choose to use god because it's just it's the way i grew up it's a it's a very familiar the god um, the light the right, highest right. energy i know people the, really people really get mad about universe versus god it's like it doesn't matter to me it's just it's yeah, it's, it's just all it's all the yeah so i i tend to think that like um because you you talk about true will a lot right yeah, like, free like you're, will. You're, yeah true, will. true will true will true, yeah. true will i i almost tend to think that like i'm still doing everything through god but it's like a choose your own adventure you know what i mean like like i think fate is kind of malleable in a sense like i think i have a fate but i think it's a little bit malleable especially the way that i get there like i don't think that it's like you're gonna die you're gonna die this day and stuff but like i do feel like that i like through manifestation that is like the ultimate way to like you have the you have the free will to choose your highest self every day like you're kind of sitting in like the fucking movie theater and you're choosing which multiplex to go into like am i going to go do this am i going to do that like you yeah. like, reality one oh two oh three oh five they're all working like co coexisting in one of these situations and you have to choose which one is your highest self it's hard to do but your free will is why you have it and the opportunity to choose that will i do agree with you that i do often feel like most of us are just sort of um fulfilling prophecies that were meant for our soul before we even got here you know and like mm-hmm. i believe that you and i doing this it was written already a long time ago and i'm just here because it, it's yeah. what was meant to happen so i feel like i already read your book but still enjoyed it for the first time yeah it no weird. it's definitely like, it was like really weird yeah. it's pretty crazy 
Yeah. Well, no. And like I said, with the whole Brady Sinellis that like, it's just like, I just literally had closed rules of attraction. This comes in the mail. Yeah, I didn't yeah. know. I didn't know any, I knew it was coming. It's not like it just somebody frisbee to fucking book at me, but like it was, it, I, I looked at it. It's right there on, in the, on the cover. Like yeah, the no, Brady no, Sinellis I mean, blurb. That's, that's it's crazy. Universe. That yeah, is, that you is have crazy. You to pay attention to those synchronicities every day, man. They're, they're you have everywhere. to follow them. You have to follow. That's the thing. Like synchronicities. It's Audible. like, a, it's like, it's like some hard boiled detective shit. It's like you follow synchronicity like that leads you to what you're going oh, for oh yeah I, for sure that's happened I, to me a lot yeah i feel like when you don't when you're not seeing any synchronicities like i feel like that's when you have to just kind of reset a little no fap a little you know like just yeah, something oh, yeah, like yeah, yeah. like um you know there's a bit in, in uh taoist herbalism like chinese taoist herbalism they talk about jing a lot right like oh, jing yeah, you're yeah. yeah like you're, you're you're like as men we we spill our jing a lot but yeah, that yeah, shit comes yeah. out of us way too much we need yeah, to yeah. we need to stop but you'll watch yeah. something like um, like we have an herbalist on every so often that talks about it and he'll just sit and watch basketball from time to time and be like, oh, I love that you. is, you, you're a big sports guy, right? I'm a, I'm a sports guy. I love yeah. sports, but you'll see a basketball player and it's like, that is the right time when they exert, when they, when you see somebody like Derek Rose, right? Old school, 2010 Derek yeah. Rose or whatever, yeah, yeah. like just kind of like from a, on a dime, just bolt towards the basket and you're like i've never seen a human being move like that and it's like that's that's the that's the jing and i feel like you know when you when you follow all synchronicities and you like the more you you stack up jing in your body through uh you know tonic herbs and prayer manifestation yeah, yeah, um and not sure. and not going through all your fucking vices like and not yeah. just and not just taking easy routes to success and or, or yeah, easy yeah. routes to like ca counting every time that you like get pleasure as like a win when you're doing that like i think anything is possible right like oh yeah, I, yeah like, for sure you, for sure mm -hmm. that that sense of non-reactiveness is how you, you you know the best manifestors are the most attached they have the biggest things they feel nothing well they they, they have their woo dance parties but to really manifest you to be super detached super chill non-reactive when the good comes non non-reactive when the bad comes and that's that's sort of exactly that but back to the the sports thing because it's kind of a story mm -hmm. like i feel like a kind of fate was like when i started really getting into basketball trey young was sort of like a villain or like an underdog right mm -hmm. and i like loved the hawks like so much um during that as a time. canadian you're a canadian hawks fan that's quite interesting <laughs> yeah 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 no a lot yeah the atlanta hawks I, I don't know i just like related i don't know you know um but uh seeing trey sort of like his work ethic and all of the, that type of stuff that started to like bleed into like a hyper sigil of like me working on the book and sort of like mm -hmm. um i put a lot of energy towards that and so like i was always like I'm the anti-hero. I'm a villain like Trey. And now as this book is coming out, I'm kind of like a villain and an anti-hero. And I'm like, oh shit. Like that energy I was yeah. putting out while I was like building my, my, even if it was personal, like my affinity to Trey Young, I, it affected my material life as well. That's that's a good way to look at. It. I mean, I I like the reason I'm reading Brad Easton Ellis for the first time in my fucking thirties is because I spent my the first 28 years of my life as a sports just junkie i mean i still am but i've i've realized that that's were, not were all you, I... were, were you there uh when uh porn star jimmy broke when he went on the date with uh julie cash or no it was kiyomi i think oh uh yeah 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 uh, jimmy garoppolo <laughs> oh, yeah <laughs> i saw them at a sushi restaurant together it, in irl yeah oh my god man you manifested yeah. that yeah wait, wait, I don't is even that like the that. night the news broke no, I just, they were like around. I just saw, like, you just like, cause I saw Jim, I mean, Jimmy sticks out like a sore thumb. Dude just looks yeah. like amazing. Like, just kind of like, the porn star? I mean, you know, there were features that were like, you know, like, Hey, well, yeah. that's definitely a, you know, a lady. Yeah. And I, but then like everybody was chattering. Everybody was like, that's that porn chick. Uh, like, mm -hmm. all you know, stuff. Yeah, it was crazy. It was at a sushi restaurant, um, in, in downtown Campbell. It was crazy. And so like, yeah, I just like, that was most of my life. But like now when I start joining these kind of like weird, spiritual places like i think people like really don't they're kind of like they look at sports as kind of like just this a pure gladiator thing no, and dude, i'm like it's poetry. And it, is, it is but it's also like yes it's, it's absolutely magic. poetry it's synchronicity at an all-time high i mean like like you like football basketball oh, anything like, you like the way that i feel when i watch nba like as it just gives me chills like as you're talking about it it's so it's crazy. amazing no it's and and also even if you take that part out of it it's the last objective form of entertainment Oh, dude, winner. I take 
all the fucking time. It's the yeah. only thing that exists as an arena and a culture that mm -hmm. can bomb people, that has organization, that has order, that, you know, I could be wearing a fucking Tyler Hero jersey and someone, another guy might know exactly to talk to me about the game yesterday. You know what I mean? Yes. Like it's, it's a real thing that exists in our yeah. call. It's the last form of entertainment. Absolutely. And 100%. And narratives like, OK, like there can be narratives. There can be like, hey, you know, there can, you can see a total astroturfed like psyop player, but it's like it doesn't matter because if that guy doesn't win, there's yeah. still he's still a fucking loser in that yeah. sense. Like to yeah. us, like we don't it's not like the Oscars. It's not like the Grammys. It's not like these things. Yeah, where you what can does really it mean like when you start to like get sort of like sad when your player's not doing well? Like uh, like when Joe Harris started to like plummet, <laughs> that was like hard on me. You know oh, what I mean? Me. Yeah. Oh, that killed oh, you I, too? I, I, Oh no, not that. But I, I have had, I probably some of my saddest memories have been my teams losing. I mean, I'm telling you, I'm a fucking junkie. So I've, I'm, I'm from the Bay area and I'm actually a lifelong golden state warriors fan. There's not that many oh, of them. God. I, I didn't I, like Steph Curry for a long time. I, uh, Hey, look, <laughs> I, I didn't like him when his ankles didn't work either. It was crazy. Yeah, we didn't yeah, think he was yeah. going to walk again. It was crazy. And he, uh, but he, uh, you know, there, there was a time in 2016, if people might remember, 2016 was a crazy year for multiple reasons. But my the my personal crazy moment was when the Cavaliers came back from three to one on the Warriors and I had to watch it. Um, and it was so just it was, it was buddies or just by yourself. No, no, I watched. I, I don't I don't like watching sports in public. <laughs> Oh, no, I, I get what you mean. It's yeah, a very spiritual, like, not my own teams, not my own teams. Experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I could watch Bucks and Celtics Eastern Conference Finals, I'll just, <laughs> like you know, no, yeah. no worry, no problem. Yeah, yeah. I could watch that with the the boys because it's I'm into it, but it's not that yeah, like yeah, deep. Yeah, yeah. Like, no, I'm a part of this. I'm the, yeah, we're yeah. together. Oh me yeah, and, no. uh, me and Draymond Green were we're together. You know, no, like, that's so funny you say that because like when me and my buddies were watching games like i would sort of get annoyed that they were there you know what i mean i was like oh. the games that were very important for me i'm like this is like you're not as immersed as me like you don't really give a fuck you're fucking yeah. texting right now get the fuck off your phone like the game is happening and i'm or like when you get into it and they look at you like dude this is how you actually yeah this is how i act you want to leave yeah, <laughs> yeah, and, yeah and, exactly um, yeah, exactly because like, like, yeah, i'm gonna do this even if you're gone i'm not performing for you yeah exactly, and uh dude. but like there was a, but but no when the, because in basketball right it was a blowing blowing a 3-1 lead they lost three straight games and it's like it was over a week long period. It was just this like impending doom. Oh, that and was like, like when the Heat lost all those games, and like yeah. I think uh, Spolstra cried. Oh, dude! I so what, what happened was was in the the, the Warriors had a little bit of a lead in Game Seven, right? Mm -hmm. And like, look, I was spoiled at the time. They had already coming off a title, like they were, and but they had won seven. They were like the team that year. They had won. They had broken the record, the win record. Oh, yeah. I was like, this is how we cement this. Yeah. And they they. Kyrie can't miss that 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 game. LeBron does the chase down block. Kevin Love gets it. Like it's just crazy, crazy thing that happens. And all of a sudden, like I just was like in my head, there was like it was. Now that I look back on it, I'm just like there was nothing I could have done. Yeah. I was I was just I was I had to submit to like this doom, you know. And then it was funny because like we were gonna watch game. Me and my wife were gonna watch game Game of Thrones later, and yeah. I, I just went and laid in bed. I just went and laid in bed. It was like oh yeah, no, I was like I, fucking. I, just, I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to watch. I didn't watch Khaleesi. I didn't want to watch. Oh yeah, I was shit. pretty pissed when when the Hawks like lost, and then I also, but also it's fucked up how like. When they won, I would win too. Like, and I would feel good. And I'm like, I'm gonna get fucking Dairy Queen ice cream. I'm gonna sell. You know what I mean? Like, it was like, yeah, man. It also like sent me into like so many highs. But dude, like that was that. I want to talk about like uh, delayed gratification and restriction. Like, I didn't have any time to watch sports when working on the book. Like, and yeah. that was like a a very like I felt like I lost a part of my identity. It was so dark. <laughs> like, so, so, so talk yeah talk talk about that writing about that, writing a book like i i mean to me i like it's weird i love reading i have no desire to write like it's i want to read everything i don't want to write That's which very I, I think you, you just and i also think it all the time and i think authors like when i talk about because they know i don't want to do the same thing so they're kind of like oh cool you just want to talk about the book that's great like so it's like it's not like i write books therefore let's talk about book like it's it's a oh it's a yeah, completely yeah. different it's a completely different thing and there's which definitely I was, a weird power play like when someone is an aspiring writer or author right. like you know it's always like awkward it's like mixtape yeah, rapper kind of the same way it's like yeah hey, yeah, like, like, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's like it, are it you can a happen fan? <laughs> uh gerald no I'm, i i i look i he seems like a nice guy but it was yeah. not my not my He's thing not, i'm a bear what about I'm a big, dude that was a moment 
That was a moment. Was I met, that a big I, moment for you guys? I we did. I actually was in the same club one time at a uh, Ab Soul uh, TDE show, mm-hmm. um, Top Dog Entertainment show, and Crayshon and Lil Debbie were there, and they were like, they were like, the place like shut down. That because it was in Oakland, so it was like that That's was like, amazing. yeah, we have to rem- give give props where props are due. You know that shit hit. That, that if you if you write another time capsule book, it should be about the Crayshon era. <laughs> like, yeah, no, <laughs> definitely, like, definitely only writing time capsule works. Yeah, I no, no, no. It's it's definitely it definitely works because like no, it was it was crazy. You, like that that era was like because it was like you didn't know what like a meme rapper was yet. Like yeah, you didn't yeah. know that nobody knew what that was. Yeah. But it was like everyone kind of felt that that's what it was. But then all of a sudden, like, and and there was always this like sneering tone towards her. Like she, nobody yeah. would admit that they liked it. But, but she was everyone, fucking cool. Like she just did her thing. She didn't give a fuck. You and know? Like, everyone she was, dressed like everyone copied it. Yeah. Everyone copied. Oh, it. dude, like, Spring Breakers was like based off of Little Debbie and Christian. Like that's how the like Harmony like taught yeah. all the girls about that archetype for the movie. Yeah, and and like it was way too ahead of its time. I mean, it was big at the time, but like, dude, if that oh, do you love happened. That movie? It would, well, I do like that movie, but even Crayshon, I mean, like the Gucci, Gucci, oh, yeah, Louis, yeah, yeah, Louis. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. Like, if that song came out today, oh, t- on TikTok, w- I'm sure it's it, a TikTok hit. It, it would have, do- it would have been like Old Town Road. Yeah, it would have, it would have dominated like a year, which yeah. is like a dog year, basically, yeah. in terms of like. Well, society. it's funny with Zoomers, like they dig up shit from the past mm-hmm. and just do sound bites that then become viral, and they don't even have like an understanding. Like they'll like like lip sync a spice girl song or something they not even know who the spice girls are you know what i mean like it's do you think they- that's cool good or bad I, i'm torn on that I'm, i don't know at, at some point i'm like it's kind of funny i'm like what, okay you get what you get out of it whatever and then i'm like mm, it's kind of sad that you don't understand the cultural impact and understanding and data but maybe a regular na- like layman consumer doesn't really need to yeah i just i like that that like they might at least because I, I, I always felt that they kind of like I, I always got really mad i'm like one of those like rap fans where i get mad when somebody doesn't hasn't heard of like tupac or something i'm like stop yeah. like how do you like that's just a, an error on your part that you haven't like, yeah, like yeah. You're, you're that lazy i didn't you don't have to be as big as fan but like i at least like that like those like yeah um, like people like, who yeah. don't know who are like my fault by eminem is it's like fuck right off. i know and then but then like they sound like that it's like okay yeah, well, yeah. you know what i mean like there's yeah. i get mad about that so i do like that at least like even if it's for content we're in like full-on exploitation mode like everything is content now oh, I, yeah, yeah, I'm, sure. I'm i'm definitely a violator of that but like it's yeah anything you read anything you watch you like have to go to youtube to talk about it you have to go here to, here to talk everything about it is but, currency it is and and it is and it's like you have to you have to do that to to kind yeah. of stay afloat and like i but i enjoy when i see like those like dumb kind of corny reaction things of like people reacting to a song that they pretend they've never heard of before like like this guy hears hall and oats for the first time it's like you've never or like you've Nirvana never or something. yeah Nirvana, like <laughs> yeah, yeah. or and, yeah. or it'll be like it'll be like a 50 year old black guy hears like marvin gay what's going on for the first yeah, time yeah. you're like no you you've heard that song you know but like i i respect it because like i yeah. do I do like, I'm obsessed with like, my thing of time is like, like I, my parents always got really weirded out when I would like be really into like the stuff they liked in the seventies. Like I thought it was like, it was like, like they were kind of like, that's cool that you like it, but it's like, you don't, and I, and I'm sure there was something more to like just the, the stuff itself, but I still like all that. The movies from back then, like I I'm obsessed with things that I can, that I know hold up over time. Like I'm obsessed with like time. I don't really think of like what I did as any difference than like Tom Paul, Paul Thomas Anderson doing licorice pizza about the seventies and teenagers in the seventies. You know what no, I mean? Totally. Like, it's like he was born in the seventies. He, I was born in the night, you know, like it is a thing, this, this sort of quest of trying to understand your, your, the generation before you and things like that. And it's a fun quest, but I definitely think that um, it, it'll be interesting if zoomers will have that quest or even care, like, you know, like, I don't know. Yeah. I, I just want that curiosity there, you know, just that, 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 yeah. that curiosity still needs to be there. Cause I think that ends up leading to good stuff. And, and just that, that constant, like, I don't really like the YOLO, like live in the moment thing like that, that never, I remember when that was, mm-hmm. you know, like when people really say like, Oh, like the kind of like you only live once. I'm like, well, first off, that's not even true. Second off, like, I, I want to, I like, it's cool to like, understand like, why, why am I still hearing Peter Gabriel in your eyes in 2023? Like why? Yeah, that, like there's a reason. Like there's there's something. Oh there. yeah, like, like you believe in the idea of like everlasting yeah. sort sort of. Art. I feel like like that's what sort of 
important about like what Jack does, you know, like with oh, perfume yeah. nationalists. Like I think that like yeah. him being like a, a savant about perfume, like it's kind of interesting from a form of magic. Like I was doing always like creativity spells for the book, like just, you know, like always just like, and all that type of stuff. And when I recorded that episode with Jack, mm -hmm. he, um, I had this like sort of come to God moment where I was like, Oh my God, like I need to be much more intentional with the sense that I mentioned in this book. And it was like, sort of like magic, like a magic I did notice. result and I like did natural notice. coincidences. Yeah. 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 For sure. It wasn't like that until Jack Mason. So shout out to Jack for. Oh yeah. yeah. No, one of, one of the most fun like experiences is just going on that show. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and I guess, you know, what I, what I mean is like, do you, do you think that uh, I know Brad Easton Ellis talks about this a lot because his generation, I, and I understand why he thinks this. Do you think the novel is actually dead? He thinks it's dead, I think. But do you he's think so the actual novel? He, he, he's crazy. He was like, I'm never writing a book. He, he always, he says he's like really inflammat yeah. inflammatory statements. He does believe them, but um, he's kind of funny. He'll be like, movies are dead. Hollywood is dead. TV is dead. And then he'll be like, I fucking loved Barbie. You know what I mean? So it's like, he's, he's, he's full of like uh, <laughs> juxtapositions and like hypocrisies. But like, uh, which makes him extremely human as much as we all are oh, but um I, yeah I, I yeah i i think it's i think it's so human and i think it's it's Very so him. relatable yeah, but yeah. also he's it also comes out in his work which is really cool like so but but right anyway like you're saying do, do you think the novel's actually dead because i wouldn't picture you, you're definitely more than just like a novelist so i yeah. think your perspective on it might be a little yeah yeah different. yeah so like mm -hmm. my thing about like new millennium boys is it's definitely not traditional literature like i wanted no. it to feel very fl filmic and well, like uh all you're getting is imagery and dialogue and some internal monologue you know like i wanted it to feel like a movie script or anything like that so i think that i would be interested to see the creative ways that people can express outside of tradition what a novel is you know like what could yeah. what could be a new or fun experience of reading a novel because like i don't want to read like the the chandelier the you know like the fucking like mind-numbing shit like I, I i there's a reason that new millennium boys never stops and it's so relentless and not mm -hmm. and, and disruptive is because i was trying to like mirror again yeah that, like that time period of like constant yeah like what mtv felt like mtv is yeah. like a drug if you watch those old tapes it's like you can get hypnotized like oh for sure it's insane yeah they knew they and I, and in the book it is very much a drug it comes up in random points in the conversation it kind of really just like, like becomes MTV the ultra. topic yeah exactly yeah. mtv yeah. ultra yeah it's, it's yeah. exactly what it is and you have the um so no i i because i i took a long break from reading growing up i was always reading stuff like whatever was on my mom's bookshelf um just kind of would just she had cool books. She had like, you know, Polynook and like just cool stuff like that. So you can like, you know, it was a way for me to kind of like watch, read dirty stuff. And like, she wouldn't care because I was reading, you know, yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. At least my son fucking reads, you know, and so I, I, that would be a way where I could kind of like do some rated R, you know, get that oh, yeah, like, kind always, of always. rush. Yeah. Um, and, and then, you know, in my 20s, of course, I'm just like, you know, killing brain cells and just only watching sports and stuff though though i don't feel though i don't consider that a lost era at all but i then come back to books and i picked up james elroy's the black dahlia on a um on a recommendation and it it, it would it would there was an olive branch extended to me because it had that visceral like dopamine rush fast paced oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. colorful language gross imagery that that i would look for in a tv show or a movie that would keep my attention span um and i think when i talked to our mutual friend kelby about his book letting out the devils he said the same thing he's like i'm writing this book for people who don't read yeah no yeah for sure that's exactly what i said about, yeah, about new yeah. millennium boys is like mm -hmm. i want people who don't read i said that to my publisher they were like that's a that's a big wish to want people who don't read to read and i was like well I fucking manifested Madonna reading my book. So yeah, I can, you really, this. You, you, you I can can't, they can't say shit to you. They can't say shit to you at all. <laughs> when when you just, say like, like the blurbs, it's like, you hate to be like name droppy, but like when you get the Madonna blurb, like you can tell your publisher, it's like, Hey, like, bro, like why, why are yeah. we having this argument? It's not, yeah. And also like, it's like, she fucking like, like repped me like a Jersey. Like she posted yeah. three Instagram stories to That's... her grid posing with the book she called herself illuminati priestess she did her research i was calling myself illuminati prince she like aligned myself herself with me her brand with me for that post and she, she fucking Amazing. videotaped herself reading you're gonna love that chapter you are the illuminati it's my favorite Amazing. chapter i've ever written in, in the pop magic but yeah definitely 
yeah, no, that was that was a big magic works moment for sure. Yeah, it, it, no, exactly. <laughs> and it's it's really tough to like when you know what your mind and and your and your whatever anything that your consciousness is 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 capable of it's really tough for someone to tell you you can't do something like it's i have like a really hard time when somebody like kind of just puts a cap on like, oh yeah and that's yeah, yeah, yeah for yeah, sure it's for really sure. tough like so i, I like it's got to be tough i mean i would imagine even for a publisher it's got to be tough to deal with you a little bit huh <laughs> oh yeah like, no no yeah, no, yeah, no yeah. for sure there's a yeah. lot of there's a lot of fights and arguments and things like that i mean you know tony robbins blurbed damian eccles the the magician you know yeah. so it's like they he fucking knows too you know like nlp nac all this shit is just magic so it's like you know i personally as i've studied it i think there is something more metaphysical to it but if it still works for people with a non-metaphysical component then fine yeah excellent excellent well i mean we'll have to do this again sometime alex that was, this oh, is yeah, so much fun sure. so much for fun sure. um even even if you don't even if you're not promoting a book please come by because yeah, you, yeah. you, you, you sure. i have also so many fucking friends who would love this Hey, pod. like it's we would, crazy. we'd be like, happy to we'd be happy Sean to have Stone, him. sam tripoli isaac like everyone Dude, oh, Let's oh bring sam, them on. sam tripoli i i almost had an episode scheduled with sam tripoli not scheduled but it, it got to like hey man like it'd be cool if you came i was like a shot in the dark right i was yeah, kind of yeah. like hey it'd be cool if you came on hey your dms are open it'd be cool if you came on and he was like let's work something out and then it, once it got to scheduling, it kind of, you know, I got pushed to the back. I, I know, I don't know how this stuff works. Yeah. But yeah. I love Sam Triple. I, I absolutely Oh, no love way. Sam yeah. Do you think he'd be into the book? Should I get him it? Oh, fuck yeah, dude. Yeah. He was, a, I, he was I, in his 20s in that era, I think. Yes. Yeah. He's, yeah, definitely. He, he would remember. I, I think I think he would love it. I mean, he definitely like he'll he's read like like he's a reader. Like he reads shit. Like okay, like cool. I, I, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, unless I'll he's lying, but yeah, he reads shit. I'll yeah, definitely work. It. Oh yeah, and are you like a big George Nori guy? Oh, coast to coast. Yeah. Um, I I mean, Art Bell was like one of my biggest heroes. I, I went uh, on coast to coast. That was hard. I, dude. I, I it's <laughs> that coast to coast is great. George George is is a trip, dude. Like I I listened to um, co I've listened to coast to coast with George. It's it's different, but he is like he is really good at what he does. Like, I had to, like, it's like sleep all day like a vampire. Like it was uh -huh. so crazy. Like it was so wild. The most psychedelic things is like when you'll see that like like john keel like mothman prophecies guy like staying up to like 3 a.m talking to art bell like taking calls from oh, people dude, like, like those are like yeah. those are like the real people of the world it's like coast oh, to coast callers like that's amazing. like the real level of like human you know what i mean like like people who think they're cleopatra and shit and they call in yeah. you know what i mean like that's that's what i fuck with like, and they're still real. smarter than like the average <laughs> fucking gen z person that's what's yeah. crazy like yeah, is they, they still like so like yeah, they, yeah yeah they're they're like still smart but they're like yeah like it's it's it, no it's crazy so yeah i i uh well i would say let everyone know where to find you but you don't you have a yeah yeah phone. i'll tell you i'll tell you, I'll, yeah, <laughs> you, I'll tell you where and... to find me um so it's alex and um mm -hmm. I have a fan mail, like 1999, fan mail at alexkazami.com yeah. for listeners. Please write me letters. I love letters from my listeners. And um, yeah, New Millennium Boys. I don't know when this is up, but it's out September 12th. Um, go cop that. We'll let we'll let your uh, we'll let your your people to pick the best date for it to drop for the yeah. For the book. I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, when do you want to drop it? Like, what are what, what are you guys doing on the queue? Oh, I don't. I don't have. I mean, it can be whenever. I just. I like. I my thing is like my whenever you drop an episode like this you get like the people like well where's the book and it's like if they can't get it you know like oh shit okay because uh, okay, yeah cool. that's that's i guess my i i'm down to drop it whenever but i would love for no no it's cool yeah yeah, the, you, yeah no let's, to, let's to, do it closer to the 12th if you want yeah, yeah. the week of the 12th we can do that for sure Absolutely. yeah exactly no that i definitely would like for people to at least be able to go straight to and, and oh, have, yeah. get a physical oh, copy yeah. oh, i have yeah, a physical yeah. copy it's a great read everybody should read it um alex thank you so much that was great we'll Thanks be in so touch much, um i'd love i want my co-host couldn't make it tonight he's it, like even more spiritual than i am so another time we'll is do it we'll do sick? A... no he's working i mean yeah okay. i mean we'll yeah <laughs> no he's amazing yeah he's <laughs> yeah, amazing yeah. he's amazing yeah, yeah i can't uh, wait to meet him yeah. yeah absolutely man well it was a pleasure everybody have a safe